Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of the Dino Supercharge Wave 1 figures, finally. These are usually one of the first things to come out, and that was sort of the case, but it took me forever to track them all down, and then by the time I did track the wave down, I, Coda was playing hide and seek. It, it was just, it was a whole mess. But anyway, I finally have... How dare you? How dare you? But you guys are just going to stay on the floor. Usually it's Tyler that fell over. Trying to set this up today, Tyler kept falling over. I was like, no wonder your dad left you. But anyway, um, this first wave is honestly pretty boring. The most exciting thing I think about this wave is the uh, Supercharged Red Ranger and the Snide figure. These guys are pretty boring, and I'll get to probably rants about that all throughout the review. But let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, we'll start with Supercharged Red, which is the only uh, Supercharged figure um, of the bunch, since he's the only one that gets this mode, when he's the carnival mode of Kyoyuger, and it's a pretty solid figure. Um, I like this mold in general, so for the most part, all the figures are, are pretty solid. I'll probably say the word solid a bunch in this review. But um, it's the same exact base mold, so all of these share that same mold. Well, I guess Snide's a little bit different, I guess, in a way. But um, So I'm just basically going to go over the articulation for like one guy and a girl, and then everyone else will be the same. Um, but you have the nice little hinge joint here. You get a solid range of 360 motion, and this figure in particular, it is blocked by his shoulder pad, but the other ones don't really have that problem. You got the single elbow joint here, you got some swiveling, and uh, you got some, uh, or no swiveling at the waist, I mean. You got some swiveling here at the, or no swiveling. You got rotation here at the leg, uh, swiveling here, single knee joint, and then you can move his head around, all that stuff. His is a little bit hindered in parts up here because of his chest armor, um, but, um, that's really the only difference. All the other guys are the same, so there's really no point in going over it. But detail-wise, I think he's pretty solid. I think they got the colors on his armor pretty well done. It pops really nicely. It's really, like, apparent T-Rex face here. It's got a lot of, kind of, personality, I think. But, like I said, the colors look really nice. The head sculpt is pretty solid. I think they did a good job on it. It's basically just the same with these little french fries coming off the back. Um, and you got these different colors here on the leg, and then obviously uh, white sleeves instead of red. But um, yeah, detail-wise, I think he's pretty good. Pretty good representation of Supercharge slash Carnival. He comes with um, the Supercharge Morpher here in its blaster mode. It would have been neat if he came with a little mini Tira, um, but I guess it wouldn't have been that colored. But still would have been kind of a neat little thing. But yeah, overall, just a solid figure, and I think, uh, like I said, one of the more, more exciting pieces of this wave. Um, but, yeah, let's get him to stand. Come on, Tyler. Do you want your dad to leave you again? There we go. I'll probably fall over in, like, five seconds. All right, then here's Snide, who, if you didn't know, is, uh, like, a Neo Zeltrax um, in Japan. Um, he's... Uh, pretty clearly based off of it, but it doesn't look like we're using that in that form here, which I'm actually kind of thankful for. Um, but his figure is overall pretty okay. I think it, it's a pretty decent looking figure, uh, given that he's actually something different and he'll probably be a more important villain. He's a more exciting bit of this wave. Um, his head sculpt is a little bit, like, proportion-wise, I think it's fine. I think it looks a little bland. It's been a while since I've seen, like, up-close pics of the suit, but he looks like some sort of anchor villain, because it's so, like, flat here, and then you just have, like, the eye and the, the little mouth and then like this looks like an anchor, so he looks like some sort of like super deranged armored fisherman villain. Um, so I'm not sure what to make of that, but um, other than that, the details are pretty pretty okay on there. The mold's pretty solid. You got some good details around the chest. Like the the color on this seems a little bit. It's like a weird dullness to it. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but articulation-wise, he's basically the same as the others. He has a slightly different like mold just because of the way he is. But I mean the same uh, base like features. Um, he does have a little bit of loose joint problems. I have two of that, those instances in this wave here with his arm and then his legs a little bit are a little loose, which are some of the first time I'm encountering in Dino Charge. He comes with a sword here, which is pretty okay, but he's overall an okay figure. He's nothing uber exciting and like super noticeable, but because he's something different, he's at least something more exciting about this wave. Okay, so these two, I went over them first because like I said 15 million times, they're the more exciting thing about the wave. The rest of the wave is the Dino Steel mode, which is just the basic Ranger figures with their dino steel, uh, dino armor on, which is this, uh, like metal piece here on their shoulder and arm, and then their little weapon, and that's all that's different about them. Now, I just, I really don't care about this mode that much. If we never got figures for it, I wouldn't cry about it, but I think the thing that made me a little bit more uh, upset about this being our first wave of dino superchargers is really boring. I mean, we have the dino superdrive pictures all 
over the promotional material. And then the very first wave of figures you get is these really boring things that if they made probably should have been included in Dino Charge proper. Um, I just think it's a really boring route to go, especially, like, I know the Super Drive will probably appear later in the season, but the fact that they're using it for promotional material and then, you know, using the first figures to be these, it's just kind of weird and boring, but uh, I've gone over that many times. But uh, that aside, these are the same exact figures pretty much as the original Action Hero Wave, so they are solid good figures. They st All the points still stand. Um, Red is the only other one that has a joint problem is that his, his knee right here on this one is loose for mine. Everyone else is fine, but the same articulation, the same details, he still looks just as good as uh, the red action hero. Um, the armor here I think looks good. Unfortunately, the weapons are removable. You can take them off of their hands if you want, so if you just want to display them with armor. But unfortunately, despite the fact that this is the main feature, I mean, they're painted color-wise, but they don't have they don't have a, a tremendous amount more detail, but there's no eye paint, which would have been super easy, and it looks kind of boring uh, without the, at least the eye paint could have given it a little more personality. But yeah, that's about it about it. It's the same articulation, same figure, it's just an armband. Um, and like, just, all you had to do is include the fact that the eye has a paint color on it. It's not that difficult. Like, I usually don't get on Bandai America about paint so much like everyone else, but when it's something like as a splotch, they could have just added something to it. Let's get these guys from the corner of shame. All right, here's green, like I said, yet again, same exact figure, the only difference here being the armor plate and the figure, or the weapon, and you can take it out of his hands. Uh, they do not combine unless I am missing some sort of crazy wizardry trick, um, but they do not combine. There is a special figure set that included uh, the combined mode of all of them. Here's Pink, who is the same exact figure yet again, so she has the same articulation as original Pink. Basically the same base articulation as the guys. Um, the only difference being that her legs have the potential articulation uh, that the guys do, but her skirt piece is like a solid plastic, so it definitely hinders it. But it's the same as regular Pink. Um, one note with her is my feet on her are a little bit warped. I didn't have this issue with a regular pink or dino drive pink or purple um, but her she has a hard time standing as you, as evidenced by the first bit of this review so that's another issue with this one I don't know how widely spread that is but yeah same exact figure you just have her weapon and that this review is gonna sound like a lot of repetitive deja vu -y type sayings I might even just have to have her lie down for now cuz I don't have time to deal with her shenanigans alright here we have chase yet again same deal just have the armor on here. Maybe they could have given him, like, to make him a little bit more worthwhile, like, make him voice command figures. Damn it, Tyler. Should you, Good thing you got left. Like, they all could have had different phrases, like, Coda could remind you he's a caveman every five seconds, like in the show. Chase could have said, Papa Squiz. Tyler could have said, Dad! And Riley could have had hero hair. I don't know what their phrases would have been, but that would have been kind of cool to have little voice boxes. He was the elusive one. I had a hard time finding Coda. Everyone loves Yoshi, I guess, so, like, he, I had a hard time tracking him down. He was the very last one I found before I was able to do this review. But honestly, that's about the it. There's really not a ton to go over in this review. Like I said, it probably 57 times, to be exact. Um, they're the same exact figures as Dino Charge proper, just with these armor things, so it's pretty boring. Um, but for this, and Tyler will just not stand. He is just, he is having a hard time here. Um, but, and unfortunately with this wave, I did have a few more QC issues than usual in terms of the loose joints and like Pink's legs being warped, which I'm just gonna not waste time. But overall, um, for this wave, I can recommend you picking up Supercharged Red. He's, he's a very good figure. Um, it's a good representation of the mold. Uh, maybe Snide because he has a unique villain release and he's, he's kind of neat. But honestly, unless you're uh, a hardcore completionist or you're just like a huge fan of the Dino Steel mode. I could say it's a pretty easy pass for the Core 5 Dino Steels. There's really nothing that exciting about them. Um, but anyway, that's about it. Until next time, make sure to check out the crazy podcast at writersrangersrambles.com. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.